Have you ever heard about the benefits of sawdust? There's a secret you may not have heard before, and today I'm going to reveal something simple yet incredibly beneficial. Sawdust, often considered trash, can actually be transformed into something that will amaze you with its process and end result. In this video, I will show you how this seemingly trivial material can be transformed into an innovation that is not only interesting, but also has a use value that you might not have imagined before. Next, I'll put the sawdust into the bottle or container I prepared earlier. This process seems simple, but it's actually a crucial step that determines the final result. The fine sawdust will fill every corner of the container, creating the perfect base for the experiment we'll be doing next. Next, after the sawdust is in the container, I'll filter the oil to prevent impurities from entering the next process. This step is crucial, because the quality of the cleanly filtered oil will determine the success of our experiment. I make sure every detail is perfect, from preparing the filter layer to ensuring there are no gaps that could allow impurities to escape. I'm going to drill a hole in the lid of the container to allow oil to flow in and out smoothly. This drilling process must be done carefully because the size of the hole will determine how quickly the oil is filtered. Next, I'm using tissue paper as an additional filter layer for the oil later. While it may seem simple, this tissue paper actually has quite effective filtering capabilities because its fine fibers are able to trap small impurities that would normally escape a regular filter. I neatly placed the tissue paper in the area I'd prepared earlier, ensuring there were no gaps that could allow dirt to get carried along with the oil flow. When the oil passes through the tissue paper and sawdust simultaneously, the filtration process will be much more effective. Next, I've prepared the sand, which I'll place in a bottle or container, as the next layer in the filtration process. Sand has a natural ability to retain small particles, so when the oil passes through this layer, there will be less remaining impurities. I added the sand slowly so that the surface was even, and there were no empty spaces that could interfere with the flow of the liquid. Next, I placed the filter on top of the bottle I'd prepared earlier. This is a crucial step because the filter must be perfectly stable, so the oil we'll pour in can flow smoothly without spilling or leaking onto the other side. Now, I'm going to start pouring the oil into the bottle. And this is where all the layers of filters we've just put together will come into play. As the oil slowly falls through the paper towel, the sand, Gradually, the oil coming out of the bottom of the bottle will start to look clearer, showing that this combination of ingredients is truly capable of creating a cheap, easy, and useful natural filtration system. This is the most exciting moment because we can directly see the real change from dirty oil to cleaner oil just by using everyday ingredients. Next, I'll move the filter first, so the next process can run more smoothly and clearly. I carefully lifted the filter that had been working, making sure no debris fell back into the oil, which was starting to look cleaner. Moving on, I'll now move on to mixing the oil into the sawdust. In this section, you'll see how sawdust, which previously looked like ordinary waste, is actually able to absorb oil very well. 
When the clean, filtered oil is poured into the sawdust, the fine wood particles immediately act like a natural sponge, absorbing the liquid quickly and evenly. The longer it mixes, the more it becomes clear how the sawdust and oil begin to blend together, creating a unique new texture and showing just how incredibly functional natural materials can be if we know how to work with them. Moving on, now I will cover the mixture of oil and sawdust with a tissue. Moving on to the next stage, where I have prepared used tin bottles that will be used as the main container. Next, I'll drill a hole in the can using a drill to allow the liquid from the sawdust and oil mixture to flow smoothly. This drilling process must be done carefully. Furthermore, the hole I made in the can bottle has an important purpose, to release the smoke. During the subsequent process, the mixture inside the bottle will undergo a specific reaction that produces vapor or smoke, and this hole serves as a pathway for the smoke to escape safely without accumulating inside the bottle. Moving on, I'll now attach a small plate to the top of the can to hold the pan. This plate will act as a support to keep the pan stable during heating or experiments, keeping everything safe and tidy. Placing this plate requires precision, as its precise positioning will determine the balance of the pan and the smooth flow of heat or steam around it. While seemingly simple, this small plate plays a crucial role in ensuring the experiment runs smoothly and safely. while demonstrating how small details can make a big difference in the final result. Once the plate is securely installed, we're ready to move on to the next step, which will demonstrate how the system works in practice. Next, the result of installing the plate now looks neat and sturdy, completely ready to hold the pan that we will place later. Next, we'll use the sawdust and used oil mixture we prepared earlier in this experiment. We'll place this mixture inside the can with the support plate attached, and you'll see how effective these simple ingredients can be. Next, we'll add the sawdust mixed with oil to the prepared can. This process must be done carefully to ensure the mixture is evenly distributed and doesn't spill out. As the mixture begins to fill the can, you can see how the sawdust and oil combine, forming the medium that will be the heart of this experiment. Next, it's time for us to do a test. And here I will burn tissue, which will then be put into a can that already contains a mixture of sawdust and used oil. As the tissue is lit and inserted, smoke begins to form, and a stream of heat works its way through the tin can, demonstrating how everyday materials can produce surprising effects. Placement of the pan must be done carefully, so that it remains stable on the support plate that we installed previously, so that the experiment runs safely and smoothly. Wow! Look at the fire burning perfectly! The flame coming from the sawdust and used oil mixture looks steady and even, indicating that all the preparation and layering went smoothly. Moving on, I'll fry an egg as part of a test to see how effective the heat generated by the sawdust and used oil mixture is. I'll place the egg in a prepared pan on top of a can, 
and you'll be able to see firsthand how the resulting flame and heat can cook real food. As the egg begins to cook, you can see for yourself the effectiveness of the system we've put together from the start, proving that seemingly simple everyday materials can be used for interesting and truly useful experiments. Cooked perfectly. From the yolk to the white, everything looks evenly cooked, indicating that the heat generated by the mixture of sawdust and used oil is working very effectively.